Greetings, Creepazoids. It's your pal Joe here. Uh, we haven't talked in a long time, have we? It's been a few months. Just wanted to give you all an update about what's been going on before we jump into this week's uh, episode. So the first thing that happened to us was we just plain couldn't get uh, the three of us on the same page as far as scheduling. And that's kind of the most important thing. If we can't find time to do an episode, the episode doesn't happen. We finally did schedule an episode. We all watched the movie. We took our notes. And then the day we were supposed to record, I contracted COVID-19. And I felt absolutely miserable. So we had to cancel. And so for the next two weeks, I struggled with COVID-19. I was at home. I convalesced on the couch. I drank lots of tea and had lots of chicken soup. And thankfully, I'm all better now. It's not an experience I would wish upon anybody. If you are able to get the vaccine, please go get the vaccine. Stay safe, wear a mask, stay away from people. You don't need me to tell you this, but it's important. So that brings us to today. We still can't schedule an episode. It's just ridiculous right now. So what I thought I would do instead was I would release something that Bradford and I recorded almost a year ago. Deep in the heart of uh, the 2020 lockdown, uh, Brad and I decided well, we wanted to do something. We had nothing to do with ourselves. So we decided to start recording an entirely new podcast. And what you're about to hear tonight is the first episode of that podcast where we decided we wanted to review every episode of The Adventures of Pete and Pete start to finish. Uh, we recorded three episodes and it we never figured out what to do with it. So we just kind of let it sit. And with nothing to produce to give y'all fine people after two whole months, we decided now was a pretty good time to uh, unleash it upon an unsuspecting public. So, <laughs> friends, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we also, we still don't have a name for this podcast. We've, just, we've called it the Untitled Pete Podcast. We've called it Cribcast 2000. Uh, our, our friend Libby suggested we call it Summer Baby, a Pete and Pete podcast. Uh, nothing has stuck yet, but if you like this episode, if you're interested in hearing more, we do have a couple extras in the tank. And if you like this one and those, we will definitely be interested in producing more. So let us know. Uh, tweet at us at Christmas Creeps on Twitter. Uh, email us at XmasCreeps at gmail.com. Let us know what you think of this. So without further ado, here is episode one of the untitled Pete and Pete podcast. Enjoy. Hey, smiling strange. You're looking happily deranged. Could you settle to shoot me? Or have you picked your target yet? It's Sandy. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to the very first episode of the Untitled Pete podcast. I don't know if we're going to come up with a better name than that. Um, here with me tonight, I am, I'm your host, Bradford. Here with me tonight is my good friend, Joey Wade. Hello, Joe. Oh, hi, Brad. Hi, hi, hi. I'm here. <laughs> um, so this is a very spur-of-the-moment thing, probably inspired in part if not in whole by cabin fever uh created by covid19 we're here to talk about the adventures of pete and pete a tv show from our youth that we remember very fondly a tv show from the 90s maybe the most 90s tv show let's get into it yeah uh oh can check what you got can I am working with a Victory Easy Ringer Locale IPA. Ooh. How about you, bud? I am currently drinking a Canada Dry Ginger Ale with Orange Aid. A lovely. It is love delightful. It. So, for the uninitiated, The Adventures of Pete and Pete was a show that came on Nickelodeon in the mid-90s? Early to mid-90s? 
Um, yeah. It was, it was, yeah, it was one of the few l- scripted live action shows that Nickelodeon had. And I think that it has aged incredibly well in one regard in that it is a time capsule of a specific time which we will never see again for the rest of our lives yeah uh the show it started out as like kind of interstitial little short films that nickelodeon would run kind of in between actual shows and And, people and by actual shows of course we mean cartoons because that's all nickelodeon yeah like cartoons and game shows and maybe uh what else was on at the time? Hey, dude. I guess I don't know, but I like, think I, hey, dude was of, of the same kith and kin as Pete and Pete. I think it was about the same time, along with Salute Your Shorts. I think they were all st- sort of that first, first uh, yeah, generation yeah. of of Nick live uh, series, if you will. Yeah, but like the response from the Pete and Pete shorts was so great that they just jumped straight into producing like half hour specials. And then that led into three whole seasons of a magical television program. <laughs> it has often been uh, described you... as, as uh, twin peaks for children. I don't know that I prescribe to that so much, but uh, it is definitely a thing. <laughs> if you are unfamiliar with this Pete and Pete, I want to say, you can definitely find episodes on YouTube, if not Daily Motion. Um, we've got we've got yeah. some personal we've got some personal faves here. Um, for my part, I will recommend. Actually, the episode that we watched is a real banger. Um, but I will recommend my two personal favorites are probably The Call and Sick Day. I do not know the episode mm. and season that those are, but those are those are my two probably like the ones that stick in my mind as being like seminal Pete and Pete episodes. Joe, do you have any that you'd like to recommend? Uh, yeah. Uh, the one that sticks out to me is, is it has always been and will always be a hard day's Pete. Ooh, and, yes. Good choice. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's so many different like moments in shows that I can't, I couldn't tell you what episode it was from, but I know I've had distinct memory of like a scene or a moment. And it's just like things that like stick out to me from my childhood that I will always remember. And they're just kind of floating around in the back of my mind uh, as Pete and Peach things are wont to do. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, individual episodes here. So we're starting out with um, the, I mean, it's technically the first episode, but there were, like I said, shorts and specials before this season one, episode one, King of the road. And man, what a banger of a season one, episode one. Let me tell you, like, there are Pete and Pete episodes I'm sure I don't remember. Like, if I see them, I'm sure I'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing this. But, like, there are certain ones that I remember. Like, if you told me, if you told me the name of the episode or, like, the main plot point, I could tell you a bunch of details. This is one of those. Like, what a good episode. Mm -hmm. Now, real quick, for the uninitiated, who are Pete and Pete? The the they are uh they are two brothers. We have Pete Wrigley uh, and Pete Wrigley, uh, an older and younger brother, who are part of the Wrigley clan. Um, older Pete is is kind of in his like early to mid teens. He's got red hair. Um, he's 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 a he's a bastion of teenage longing and horniness. Um, for lack <laughs> oh, of a better perfect. term, it, it's. It's really perfect. And then we have young Pete who's like still on the cusp of being a kid and he like he thinks girls are gross and he's got a, a tattoo of a mermaid called Petunia and his best <laughs> friend's Artie the strongest man in the world. And <laughs> it's just the best. And he always wears flannel because this is the 90s. And God, if you haven't watched this show, please go watch this show. Like, oh, you're missing out so much. It's so good. Like you said, it's a perfect time capsule of like what 1992 looked like. Oh, it's it's amazing. Um, and then we have mom, who is is the mom of the Wrigley family, and her defining trait is that she has a metal plate in her head, and yes. she can she can direct and sort of like magnify radio signals. In addition to that, she's kind of like your your archetypal 
mousy mom character. I I think later in the in the series she kind of comes into her own as a character, but at least now she's kind of like your mom, but she, she's, she's got a plate in her head. <laughs> yeah, she's frequently the voice of reason on the show. Um, yes. But then then there's then dad have... who is he's a dad. <laughs> I believe Don Wrigley, Don, Don Wrigley. Wrigley. He's a bald, middle-aged kind of kind of doughy man. He's everybody's U.S. dad from the 90s, pretty and much. Boy, let me tell you, if this isn't like a cartoon parody of my own parents, I don't know what is. I think that's kind of the thing, is that they were supposed to be a cartoon parody of every parent. Because, like... But, I mean, like, my dad was a pudgy short guy with a, a, a horseshoe haircut, and my mom was a redhead with very short hair. Like, I, they were my parents growing up. I think they were a lot of people's parents, because the mom definitely hit my, my mom on the nail on the head because goodness gracious <laughs> that could have been any's mom so we're so. here to talk about episode one uh season one episode one king of the road king o wherein fraud. king of fraud wherein the wrigley family sets out on their yearly pilgrimage to the hoover dam oh boy now, where do you even do- begin I don't know. Have you ever been to the Hoover Dam, Fred? I ha- I was going to ask you the same thing. I have. <laughs> I have too. I did not get to the Hoover Dam until I was I I did not get there until I was a fully like until I was a fully fledged adult. I did not visit the Hoover Dam until I think back. I want to say 2015, I think was when I visited the Hoover Dam. Mm. Now I I know your family visits visits the the Las Vegas a lot more often. Uh, so you probably had more yes. opportunity to visit the Hoover Dam. I think I can, I can say I've but... been there twice in my life. Okay. That's one and more the, time than the, I have. The second time was the time that I discovered I and I do in fact have a crippling fear of heights. Yep. Discovered that on my first time there, bud. Because uh, now, af- thanks to 9-11 and terrorism and, you know, everything, you, it's a lot harder to just drive up to and across the Hoover Dam than it used did, to be. Did you so, drive across it? No, but they, they have they have since oh, built, they have since built a giant bypass highway across the uh, you know across that canyon, which is much steeper yes. and wider than the Hoover Dam ever was. So it's a little more impressive. But also, you can just walk out on that bridge. And boy, my yeah, that was a little out, rough for me. My family walked out there once, and my dad had his his iPad out. He held it out over the railing with his two hands as far as he could, and my legs kind of gave out underneath me because I was so scared for his life, not my own. Your his iPad's life. Um, yes. My wife did the same thing with her phone, and I was like, "Oh, could you please not? Could you please maybe not?" Um, we drove across it, but we also did the bypass nearby. Yeah. Yeah, I, I cannot. I can't. I won't. I don't know. No, thank you. <laughs> must I must say, I visited the Grand Canyon on the same day. That was part of our Grand Canyon mm-hmm. jaunt yeah. um, of our trip. Grand Canyon, much more impressive than I thought it was going to be in person. Hoover Dam, much more underwhelming than i thought it would be like it turns out it's, it's just a dam it's kind of like if you think about the time that it was built in impressive in yeah. 20 in the in the 2010s not, not so much <laughs> it's it's a dam it's it's all right it's all right it's a there's, dam. yeah there's a lot of history there there's a lot of uh, if you're interested in like architecture and things there's a lot to get into but if you're just going to see the hoover dam uh Maybe look at a picture. There are better dams. <laughs> there are <laughs> better chasms in the earth, in fact. M- might I suggest um, the Grand Coulee Dam in Washington? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Just pick a dam. So so maybe we should get into this. Uh, <laughs> yes. Let's, maybe we shouldn't make this podcast just doing a plot synopsis because that's what our other, what our other podcast is, basically. It, yeah, that's what everybody does. So I mean, we can tell you the 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 basic you know gist of it. The, the Wrigleys go to the Hoover Dam, and Big Pete tells us about all of the wacky, eccentric things that Dad gets into along the way. Like his dad is convinced that he's the king of the road, and he has to be you know the perfect uh, vacation driver, road road tripping dad. And we yeah. are introduced to another dad who actually has 
the proper license plate from their state, King of Road. Um, Wrigley, the Wrigley dad has King of King O Fraud, <laughs> which uh, there you go. And I also noticed. So it's it's this. I, yes. I, I also noticed the, the license plate says that it's the Sideburn State. The what Sideburn s- State. What state is that? <laughs> that is not a real state. Uh, I assume that is, it's Oregon because why wouldn't it be? If you think about it, it implies that the Wrigleys live within at least, they said 23 hours. So actually, I might do this math tomorrow, but do it that now. implies if the Wrigleys are making a round trip, they live within at least 12 hours of the Hoover Dam, which severely limits the number of states that they could live in. So it could potentially be Oregon. But but here's the thing. Wellsville, which we have not been introduced to in any of the episodes so far, because we're at season one, episode one, is so prototypically like Ohio, Indiana, like middle America, it hurts. And yeah. I'll get into I'll get into why that is in a future episode. But for now, just sure. know. Um yeah. Goodness gracious, we're going to get into Wellsville, because Wellsville, I feel like, is its own character and one of the more interesting characters in the show. Yeah, like, I'm going to go ahead and call my shot now, like, if the 60s had Mayberry, the 90s had Wellsville. Yes. That's how I feel about oh, it. What a good show. What a good show. I, I, ugh, I, I cannot do... I think both of us grew up as 90s kids, and only 90s kids are going to get this podcast. But, man. Yeah, because you know what? Think Pete I, and Pete doesn't really exist anymore. You can't get it anywhere. It doesn't. Because, again, it's a time capsule of the 90s. This, I don't know that anybody who didn't grow up as a child in the 90s, and I'm saying this completely unironically, is going to get the appeal of Pete and Pete. I don't know, man. It It is definitely... I, I, <sighs> it speaks to something about, like, us. when it, it spoke to us when we were children because this was how the world looked to, like, an 8-year-old or a 9-year-old in 1994, you know? Yes. This... <sighs> okay. Uh, okay. We're going to... The other thing about I think it, we're all... Yeah. The other thing about it, I'm sorry, is that just like with the Andy Griffith show, which I'm going to continue referencing here because I think it applies... Is that yeah, absolutely the, the adventures of Pete and Pete now is very reminiscent of a time in this country that does not exist anymore. It's I would say I think we bandied this about on our other our other show Christmas creeps a little bit, but yeah. this Pete and Pete encapsulates I think the last hurrah of pre internet America. Ooh yeah, pre digital America, pre digital America, and pre internet America. Well, let's talk about this that with, is what... in, in in regard to this episode. Yes, because uh, so the the like Dad's three points of you know driving are never ask for directions. Um, yes. Perf- <laughs> was what is it? Perfect uh, rooftop stacking. Perfect. Yes. And making quote unquote good time. Uh, all yes. Well, as, as, as rooftop two stacking. Of, two aside, of which. Yeah, two of which. Two of which ne- do not exist anymore. Yes, because we use our iPhones for everything. Uh, therefore, we we have iPhones now, so we can ask Siri for directions and not another living human being. Or we do not have to rely on paper maps, which was another facet of this episode. Or magnet magnetic compasses. Or getting lost. Yes. Uh, which is or a, yet again radio another airwaves. facet of this. Oh my God! I don't know, man. I think you and I, I, I. I bandy this about a lot, but yeah. I think you and I grow up in this very special time, and I know we're making ourselves to be more important than we are. We're not, yeah, but yeah. But we're not, but I think, hey, you know, there's a grand swath of the population of the entire world that grew up in the same age, but that is, our adolescence was pre-digital, pre-internet, and then we came of age kind of along with the internet. Mm-hmm. So we remember a time when none of this existed and it's oh it it's yeah it's it, magical in a way like it sucked yeah in a certain way but it was also kind of beautiful in a way 
Yeah, because we didn't know that it could be better because it hadn't been in, better hadn't been invented yet. And we also couldn't know that it w- th- that we didn't know that it would be worse because it was also way worse because the, the hell website twitter.com did not exist and we didn't spend half our lives scrolling on it. But That's true. But like yeah, <laughs> older millennials have like that's very special we we thread that very special kind of uh generational gap where like we remember a time before the internet and we also are like the first ones to really learn how to handle the internet. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I distinctly remember being in elementary school and like being taught how to use a computer in like second grade. Yup. I also remember being in middle school and one of my friends showing me like Kazaa and online multiplayer games and Napster and stuff and like blowing my mind. (laughs) It's a whole new world. Did I ever tell you about the first experience that I remember having with the internet? And it's hilarious. No. I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever told this on my podcast, on on a podcast that we had. So it's like the, it's like the late nineties, mid to late nineties. And my dad has AOL on, I think like his work computer or something like that. And he puts me on his lap. He's like, okay, son, let me show you how the internet works. And we go on AOL and we play like, we go to like a kid's, kids game room or whatever and then a chat window pops up and i'm not making this up and it's like some like sex bot where it's like why are you playing these kids games let me show you how to fuck and i just remember a word that rhymed with duck and my dad like tried to close it out as quickly as as possible oh my god brad i I know i know right brad was sexually assaulted by the internet at a very young age it was it was a time like I didn't it, I wasn't traumatized by it because I didn't I was like young enough that I didn't know any better. <laughs> but can I now... tell you my, my first experience with the Internet? Yes, please. Because it, this memory just just now just dislodged itself in my brain and I have it now. I was in fourth okay. grade. It was, it was the fourth grade class and the teacher took us to the library. I'm sorry. Media center. Excuse me. Yeah. And our teacher asked us to go home, find a website, a URL, and bring it to school. And we would use the, sc- <laughs> li- the library's computer. <laughs> this type, won't end well. <laughs> to type in the URL. And she would show us what the internet, what websites are. Mind you, this was uh-huh. like 1996, I want to say. Okay. So I went home and I found one that I thought I would like, I wanted to do. And okay. So we, we're in the library. <laughs> and this what and it's like I step forward like I've got one and this one girl who I don't know why but she always just hated my guts. She uh-huh. just like dismissively said, Ugh, "It's not starwars.com, is it?" It was it starwars.com. Yes, it was Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I was so embarrassed. I How- just stepped back and declined to offer my website oh poor joe i feel like we i feel like both of us being being the way that we are we both had like those girl nemeses yes in in elementary school and i would i remember always coming up with like very pete and pete-esque like schemes of getting back at them that i never enacted and that never came to fruition but that's how I thought about these things. Yes. Um, oh, man. We kind of got off on a tangent, but it's it's one that we needed to address because it's the elephant in our room whenever we're talking about Pete and Pete. It's how <sighs> old we are. Um, wow. Where to begin? Um, so we went over the plot synopsis, but sure. a thing with older Pete that I think maybe I didn't understand when I was watching this because I was pretty little when I was watching this is the older Pete sort of sort of teenage longing towards the what if and we see this in this episode where he sees a girl once on a road trip and then spends the rest of the road trip thinking about her yes and that is absolutely something i can relate to like as somebody who was a little bit older if i had watched this maybe five years on when i was like 13 or 14 because that sort of level of of teenage obsession definitely definitely hits home. It's it's nice in a way. 
Yeah, and it's the show is very good at, at kind of th- again threading that needle between you know what an eight or nine year old thinks is important and then what a thirteen year old thinks is important because they're not that yes. far apart but they're very different. Yes, like Big uh, Pete is all about Little Pete in this episode. We are mutants. We are mutants. <laughs> and to quote, and to quote older Pete, I wonder if we're listening to the same song. <laughs> I mean, Little Pete spends a good portion of this episode uh, sticking his hat out a car window and and drying out his tongue in protest for his dad's driving <laughs> and and reading comics That's and reading much comic all Little books. Pete does. I want to say that Older Pete does most of the heavy lifting. We must mention that Older Pete is the narrator of every episode, so yes. we can go ahead and assume him to be the main character or the protagonist of the series Pete and Pete. Yes. However, and I- <clears throat> we have a we. Ha- we have a sort of Ray Schmuckles uh, strong bad situation where Little Pete kind of became ends up becoming the most popular character, and most of the main plot lines end up being about him towards the end of the series. Right. It's it's the same thing as like every sitcom has their like standout comic relief character that everybody loves. Like he's the cr- Little Pete is the Kramer of this show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So wait, if Little Pete <sighs> um, is the Kramer, does that make Artie the Newman? I don't- no, because I I want to say that older Pete and Artie don't have sort of a nemesis relationship. Okay, that's true. That's true. Godspeed, my little Viking. <laughs> what a strange yeah. character. One of I the love th- him so much. One of the things that I love to this day is that uh, Artie, played by Toby Huss, Toby Huss has gone on to be in so many things. I am always delighted to see him pop up in literally anything. <laughs> Why don't you? I don't know that much about actors. Why don't you hit me with some of his most recent appearances? Okay, well, Toby Huss, uh, he played, he voiced Khan on King of the Hill for one. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it, if you saw the most recent uh, Halloween movie, he was the husband of one of the main characters, mm-hmm. which also means in a Halloween movie, he, he also gets got, and it's terrible. Um, I mean, it's a Halloween movie. Of course he's going to get got. Yeah, everybody but two people gets got in a Halloween movie. Um, but no, he he is just like one of those little character actors who always just kind of pops up in l- tiny roles in literally everything. So let me just real quick look up uh, Toby Huss just so I can give you some of his more recent <sighs> work. While while Joe is looking this up, just to, just to kind of link us back to – he mentioned King of the Hill. Part of the reason that we are doing this podcast is I've recently – come to recognize the beauty of plex um i'm creating a plex server right now and joe joe has bestowed upon me his plex which has pete and pete on it um mm-hmm. so i've been i've been dipping into that so thank you for that yes yes um uh, also okay so on king of the hill alone toby huss voices con cotton hill joe jack uh- <laughs> coach Cleehammer. <laughs> M.F. Fatherton, and then various others. So he's wow. all over that show. But on top okay. of that, you know, he is on, he's been on Reno 911. He's been on Carnival, the Venture Brothers. Um, he's on Beavis and Butthead. He is on Halt. He, oh, he's one of the main characters on Halt and Catch Fire. He, he plays Frank Sinatra in a lot of things because he does a really good Frank Sinatra huh. impression. Interesting. Yeah. And he's a series regular on the show Dickinson about uh, Emily Dickinson. Oh yeah, I've been meaning to watch that. Um, should we talk about Artie now, or should we loop back around to Artie when we have an episode that features? Yeah, him? I'd say let's wait until we have a good Artie episode. Because man, isn't Artie one of the best characters on the show? <laughs> we're gonna save that. We're gonna we're gonna tuck that chocolate away for later. I think. <laughs> give you that little morsel when it's appropriate he, he does make like a five second appearance in this episode yeah and if, the, if that's your first introduction to Artie, it's oh, <laughs> it's it jarring it is it is jarring because you see a man clinging to an overpass and that's all you see <laughs> just screaming at a car passing by <laughs> <laughs> it's so good um mm. oh god but okay okay so um, getting back getting us back on track the main like thrust of this episode of Pete and Pete is Big Pete learning what it means to be a Wrigley. Yes. And Dad and Don Wrigley learning that it's not 
important to be perfect at everything. You just have to do it, do things your way. Yes. And that's a big part. You don't part have of, to be the king of the road. You just it's have to be. a big part of parenthood. Yeah, the king of fraud. You know a lot about that now, don't you? I'm a dad now. And this episode resonated with me in a different way than it did when I was a child. I'm um, sure. I have a lot to learn still, but I'm a dad now. Um, you very yeah, much are the you, big piece gotta... of this conversation because one of us has not yet crossed over into that divide. You just gotta, I don't know. The takeaway that I have right now is like, it's not about forcing memories on your children. It's just about just about trying to be a good parent, doing your best, trying to make good memories. I don't know. Because it's like the first half of the episode is, is is Don Wrigley like in this this dick measuring contest with this other dad, and that is. Even before I was a dad, I could tell you that this you know comparison is is the the death of joy. I don't know what the real quote is, but you know what I mean. Yeah, it is. It is trying to compare yourself to a different family is a very quick road to ha- to unhappiness. And instead, you got to make the best of what you got. You got to you got to enjoy the time with your family. You got to get lost. You got to make mistakes, get messy. Magic school bus. <laughs> <laughs> you take no. the good, you take the bad, you put them together, and there you have Pete and Pete. Yes. No, I I don't know. I'm getting off track, but I just want to say Pete and Pete's a really good series and it was very special to me um maybe this isn't like the best episode to start with because like the first episode of the show that takes us away from wellsville and i feel like you and i have a very special connection to wellsville i agree and i really am eager to to talk about wellsville and the things that wellsville reminds me of because i i know that in my conversations with you both of us have sort of a wellsville analog Mm -hmm. that we are eager to talk about but we cannot talk about it in this episode no, yeah. But so, uh, Lord I willing, wanna, and the crick don't rise, yeah. we will get back around to that. I just want to thank you for joining me on this this journey, um, born out of everything that's going on right now. We're, I, it's we're... a trip down memory lane. I wish we could go back to this. I would love to go back to this, but Wellsville doesn't exist you anymore, would... Brad. I know. In more ways you, than one. Would you... Given the opportunity, ugh, excuse me. Given the opportunity, as an adult, as as you are right now, would you want to be transported back to this age that Pete and Pete portrays? Oh, like, that's that's tough. I don't, I don't know. Like the que- there's two different ways to think about it. It's like just you, or your family and everyone you love, kind of gets copy pasted back into the like the early to mid 90s would you do that this is this is the real philosophical crux crux of this this is what this is our this is our discussion for this episode (laughs) well you know i i don't know because on the one hand i feel like i did that i i did that as well as i could the first time around and i miss it you did it as a you did it as a child would oh, you so do you, it as an adult what I do, is the question. I would kind of love to go back and try and repeat Make my your way in the, as 90s. In, in, the, as in the 90s. It's kind of like a reverse big situation is what you're asking. But, but he, yeah, but you're not in a child's body. Let's, no, let's no, no. preface that. I know like, we all have the fantasy of going back and like, I'm in, I'm in the sixth grade, but I have all the knowledge of a 32-year-old man. It's like, no, I'm a 33-year-old man, and also it's 1992. Yeah. Is what you're saying. And Ska reigns supreme. Uh, no, it's 1992. On... I can warn people that Ska is coming. Yes. You're walking <laughs> on sunshine, my friend. Um, I don't know. I don't See, it's it's tough because like, this, is, this is what every generation goes through. We are dealing with people now who desperately want to take us back to the 50s. And by all accounts, the fifties were a terrible, yeah. a terrible time for most people. So I feel, 
and that's that's where that's what I'm kind of getting at here is I feel like as children we are viewing the 90s with rose tinted glasses. I don't think it's going to be any easier as an adult in the 90s than it is and as a I mean, yes. We've got a, a terrible terrible fascist autocratic president and a disease is rampaging around the country, but I don't know if it's going to be any easier other than the fact that the internet doesn't exist in the 90s. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and I mean I guess the one big thing would be that podcasting doesn't exist so we couldn't have this conversation. However, when we get to Hard Days Pete, that conversation will be back in a big bad way. Is that the one? Okay, let me let me just ask. Is that the one where he has the the pirate radio station? Yes. Oh, that's such a good episode. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't mm-hmm. wait. Mm-hmm. W-A-R-T Wart Radio. Radio. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Um, if, if you cannot tell, we are very excited to talk about many of these episodes coming up. And it and it's, it's tough. It, it's hard to, like, bring this nostalgia back because this show was special to a very thin slice of the, of the population. And like if yeah. you weren't if you weren't in on it when it was on, you missed it. Because and I because I can tell you directly, like my girl my girlfriend is only like four years younger than me. She has no idea what Pete and Pete is. Really? Yes. And it's not like for wow, just n- not just missing it. Like it just didn't exist four years later. That's weird. I don't know, man. So maybe this is all. Maybe this podcast is like already too navel gazy but no because i think this is a, a, an interesting exercise and i i want to continue because i want to continue down mem- this look down memory lane and see how much different the early 90s were from right now because i think it can be instructive so cards on the table if right now a magician a wizard man came up to you a wizard lady let's say a wizard lady came up to you and said joseph wade I can transplant your whole life, your family and friends, back to the early 90s. Or you can stay as you are now. Which would you choose? I would stay as I am now. Yeah? I don't know that I could live with myself in the early 90s knowing what's coming in 2020. And knowing full well that I would have no control over that. I get, I get what you're saying. Ooh, now that you bring up that point, like you know what's coming. I didn't think about that. God. I mean, I could, I could put all of my stock in Google early. That would be great. But you know, um, it doesn't necessarily like because everybody has this idea that they're gonna go back in time and they're gonna, you know, and stop JFK from getting murdered and find change out change history, stop nine eleven. But like, okay, you go back the in twenty sixteen election. <laughs> you go back in time. Yeah, How I, much I, you're influence right. on anything are you actually going to have? Probably not a lot. You know, it's it's that's a big reason why Back to the Future is about Marty McFly and his parents and nothing else. You make an excellent point. I think I think I too, uh, with your point, I would have to decline and live live on recollecting these days of the the early to mid nineties with rose tinted glasses. Wellsville is a, a time and a place that is going to have to live in our live on in our memory. It really is our Mayberry, if you think about it. Yeah, this is really. It's it's sad that every generation has this, but it's also sort of beautiful in a certain regard, but also sad. I guess a lot of sad things are also beautiful. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess the the lesson is you can look back fondly on those times, and you can look back fondly on the places you remember and the things you remember, but it, they, they have to stay a memory. You can't force history on the present. And right. you have to move I mean, I, I'm not living under any illusion that we're ever going to go back to a pre-internet age. That would be, that would be wild. Um, well, and I mean, probably the result of some sort of catastrophic event or 
terrible, restrictive government. I don't know, man. I guess all I'm saying is, generally speaking, there are no good old days. You know? Oh, yeah. The for good sure. old days, for sure. by and large, are the present. The, uh, the, the current a, con- days. a construct of the zeitgeist? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. This is why this feels extremely navel gazy, but in we're a way, winding down. I we're like obviously it. winding down to a, a close here. So I'm gonna bring it back for one last point, just for one last sort of nineties little tidbit. Did you notice in this episode the toy that little Pete sticks on the front of the car? Um I did notice it, but I did not recognize it. It's like a blue man with like silver wings. Is it is it Manhattan? Is it Dr. Manhattan? No. I know what this is. What is it? Don calls it Captain Zorman. They <laughs> just made that up. That's nothing. It is one of Rita Repulsa's henchmen from Power Rangers. <laughs> it is Babu from Power Rangers. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Because even as a kid, I remember yeah. it, thinking it was very weird that they only had that one and no, no other Power Ranger figure. And I guess it's because they thought it was the least recognizable please don't sue us sunrise (laughs) um yeah this is our this is our podcast where we talk about pete and pete and also the 90s and also really more like two old men yelling at clouds about the 90s but growing up in the 90s only 90s kids will get this podcast um if you've listened through all of this bless you Maybe you remember Pete and Pete. Maybe you remember the 90s. Maybe you remember growing up as a child in the 90s when everybody thought that we were post-history. Like, good Lord. Look at us now. Yeah, that's right. This is like a very end-of-history TV show because when we get into like the, the town dynamics of Wellsville, it's just people trying to figure out how to live because there's literally nothing else to do. And I think we we I think that's better saved for another episode where we actually talk about the the I want to argue the main character of Pete and Pete, which is Wellsville. <laughs> Doesn't he start pretty much every episode saying like, "This is Wellsville"? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about that in the future. But here you have your dramatis personae, the Wrigley family, who have. Wellsville foisted upon them, more or less. Yes. Or rather, they're foisting Wellsville upon the rest of America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully we'll be back very soon to discuss the next episode of The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Uh, if you are not familiar with the series, you can find it wherever pirated episodes of television are found two of the three seasons are available on dvd and also yes it's available on dvd also maybe check out the band polaris who i seem to think only put out one album which was uh music to the adventures of pete and pete but it's a fucking banger of an album (laughs) yeah no kidding like 90s garage rock prototypical 90s garage rock Mm -hmm. just just amazing album from top to bottom if you're gonna expose yourself to any pete and pete media go listen to the the polaris album because it's it's friggin great but uh, i would love to come back and continue talking about pete and pete and i hope uh bradford you do as well thanks thanks everybody for listening and we've gone officially longer than the episode which i'm sure will happen frequently yeah until next time everybody uh good night paisanos <laughs>